Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. A quick episode today, but an important one nonetheless. We just got news that SpaceX has filed a new FCC application seeking a blanket license authorizing operation of end user earth stations for deployment as vehicle mounted earth stations, earth stations on vessels, and earth stations aboard aircraft, collectively earth stations in motion or ESIMs. In short, it seems as though SpaceX has the software ready to enable Starlink terminals to operate on the go being mounted on cars, boats, and planes. So yes, in the near future, we could see gigabit speed internet on cruises, camping RVs in the woods, and on your next vacation flight. And that last one I know a lot of us are quite ready for. I've linked the full FCC application below if you'd like to nerd out on the detail, but I've read through it for you and will share the highlights. SpaceX has requested that the FCC grant the requested blanket license as expeditiously as possible. These ESIMs, as I will refer to them, Earth Stations in Motion, are identical to the consumer user terminals, but these new ones have mountings that allow them to be installed on cars, vessels, and aircrafts, which are suitable for each respective environment. And because they are electrically identical to the previous end terminals, ESIM terminals have the same transmit power, gain, and EIRP. EIRP is just effective isotropic radiated power, and it just means how much power it would take to have an equivalent signal strength from an omnidirectional antenna. SpaceX services will ensure installation of ESIM terminals on vehicles and vessels by qualified installers who understand the antenna's radiation environment so that they will be best suited to maximize protection of the general public and the people operating the vehicle and equipment. The application also said that before operating the ESAAs or the aircraft version on a U.S. registered aircraft within a foreign nation's airspace, SpaceX will ascertain whether the relevant administration has operations that could be affected by ESAA terminals, and then they'll determine whether that administration has adopted specific requirements for ESAA operation. So simply put, if foreign airspace has special rules, SpaceX will be aware of them and they'll operate accordingly, and if there are no special rules, they will operate as normal. And there is some detail about spectrum sharing that is explained in the application that I know most most people here aren't interested in, but the gist of it is that SpaceX has engineered its NGSO or non-geostationary orbit systems to achieve a high degree of flexibility in order to facilitate spectrum sharing with other authorized satellite and terrestrial systems. SpaceX's system is highly advanced, flexible, and capable of immediately ceasing operations in the unlikely event it is notified that harmful interference has occurred. So the FCC granting this application would expand the range of broad broadband capabilities available to moving vehicles throughout the United States and to moving vessels and aircraft worldwide. And a really impressive fun fact, one report estimates that by 2022, annual global internet protocol traffic will reach an annual run rate of 4.8 zettabytes or 4.8 trillion gigabytes of data that would be exchanged worldwide that year. So think about road trips across the country, freighters traveling from Europe to the U.S., domestic and international flights, they are all about to be changed with SpaceX's innovative, cost-effective, and spectrum-efficient satellite system. If you want to learn a bit more about Starlink and the details, you can watch the video in the card, and it's also linked below. Now, of course, I have as many questions as you probably do right now. The filing made it sound like the terminals will be exactly the same, with the only real difference being the mounting system. So are we just going to slap this giant thing on the roof of a Tesla? with a special mount and call it a day? My interpretation of the filing would lead me to believe yes, however odd it may seem right now, but I'm sure we'll get more information in the coming weeks and months. And of course, the application still has to be approved before this becomes official. And as of now, to my understanding, portability is not restricted under SpaceX's current license. This means RV owners setting up at different campsites each night is technically allowed. It's just to date, SpaceX has not wanted users to do this, most likely in an attempt to get valid data during the beta based on numbers of people in each geographical area for bandwidth use, etc. And in terms of timeline for approval of this application, my best guess would be something similar to their last request for FCC approval, where they applied in February 2019 and they were later approved in March 2020, with devices then being seen out in the wild in May of 2020. And Elon recently said speeds will double to around 
around 300 megabits per second and latency will drop to around 20 milliseconds later this year. Yes, the lower latency figure, the better. And just for context, my internet speed test today came back 103 megabits per second download speeds and 4.4 megabits per second upload speeds with a 52 millisecond latency. Elon also added recently that Starlink will have active coverage on most of Earth by the end of this year and all of it by next year, 2022. After that, it's about densifying coverage. It's important to note cellular will always have the advantage in dense urban areas, whereas satellites are best for low to medium population density areas. The regular Starlink service is still about $100 per month with a one-time upfront $500 equipment fee, and Starlink has over 10,000 customers already and over 1,200 satellites deployed. So far, the beta testing location has been between 36.9 degrees north and 54.8, and the service has been limited to the United States, Canada, and select parts of the UK. So sure, it may be a year or so before we start to see this new broadband internet on cars, planes, and boats, but I for one am very excited about it. I would love to rent an RV and take a cross-country road trip one year, and having fast internet the entire time on the go, wherever we may be, would be awesome as it would allow me to work from anywhere. I have not ran this by Ashley yet, so keep it on the DL for now. But that's all I have for you guys today. Please take a second to like this video if you did, and I hope that you have a great day. Until next time.